Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'd like to tell you of a, of a tale of three builders. Three builders in a city of towers. The first builder awoke every morning, kissed his wife and children on their head, and set out to his building site. The man would toil there in the heat of the day, tirelessly laying brick upon brick, securing each with firm mortar, working without rest. One day his father came by and said, Son, why do you waste your time on this tower? You should come with me and work on my building. It is the building of your ancestors, of your father, of my father, and his father before him. That is your legacy, not this thing that occupies your life. But the man refused and said, Good father, join me here. But his father would not and went away. On another day, his wife came by and said, Husband, why do you waste your time on this tower? I never agreed to this, and your children are already working at your father's building. That's where you belong, not here at this thing that occupies your life. It was harder this time that the man refused and said, Beloved wife, go and fetch our children and join me here. But his wife would not, and went away. On yet another day, his sister came by and said, Brother, why do you waste your time on this tower? I have never built anything, nor have I worked a day at our father's building. And yet look at me. I am happy and well. Our father's afraid to leave his building, and this thing occupies your life. Be smart like me and quit building altogether. The man had looked up to his sister in his youth, and her words struck his heart. He struggled, but finally refused and said, Dearest sister, this tower is good. Roll up your sleeves and join me here. But his sister would not and went away. Eventually the man's own thoughts came to him in the hottest hour of the day. My wife my children, my father, my sister, everyone I know has come to me and asked, why do you waste your time on this tower? Perhaps there is something to what they say. I don't want to disappoint my father, and I don't want my wife and children to abandon me. And I certainly don't want my sister to think me a fool. And there are so many other things that I would rather be doing with my time. After all, what has this tower done for me other than to make me tired and weary? And this time the man put down the brick in his hand and went away. Now the second builder was much like the first. She awoke every morning, kissed her husband and children on their heads, and set out to her building site. The woman would toil in the heat of the day, tirelessly laying brick upon brick, securing each with firm mortar, working without rest. One day as she approached her work site and saw a crowd gathered, they were jeering and mocking her, saying, Look at her! It is the builder come to waste her time on this tower. She should be doing something useful or important. What a foolish waste of time! And yet as she walked past them, she said, Come, join me here. But they did not, and went away. A few days later, as she approached her work site, she saw another crowd gathered. They yelled at her to stop building, saying, Your tower is an eyesore. It's offensive, and no one likes it. Why can't you build this tower somewhere else, or build this maybe somewhere private? Stop. She was somewhat more fearful this time, but the woman walked past them and said, Come, join me here. But they did not and went away. Now one morning the woman was listening to the news as she got ready to leave for work, 
and heard the news anchor say, Congress just passed legislation that outlaws towers. All new construction is to be stopped and citizens are encouraged to begin disassembling any work already done. Well, the woman was greatly disturbed and, and grew fearful because she knew that she needed to keep building the tower. So as always, she kissed her husband and children on their heads and set out to her building site. When she arrived, she saw a tremendous fence had been placed around it, with signs reading, Trespassers will be shot. For several minutes, she stood outside, thinking what to do. But fearing death, she turned around and walked away. And the third builder, like the other two, would toil in the heat of the day, tirelessly laying brick upon brick, securing each with firm mortar, working without rest. Now, he did not have a wife or children, but was content with what he had. One day, as he came to work on the tower, a friend said, Why do you waste your time on this tower? I've found another building project that needs someone to work on it. The pay is good. But the man refused and said, Friend, join me here. But his friend would not and want way. A few days later, the foreman from another project came by and said, See here. I have a building project that needs laborers. Your friend invited you, but you did not come. The pay is good, and it will only take one day. The man considered and, and agreed, saying, Well, if, it is, if it's only going to take a day, well, then so be it. And he found that the pay was good and returned to his tower the next morning. After a few more days, the foreman came back and said, Why do you waste your time on this tower? You saw how well I paid you, and the work was easy. Come, work for me another day. The man found that he had enjoyed the extra money and, and looked at his tower, thinking, well, my tower didn't suffer when I was away. Perhaps I'll go work again for this foreman. He agreed and went to work for the foreman again. Eventually, the man left his tower behind and spent all his days working for the foreman. His home was now lavish, filled with every gadget and toy he could ever desire. But his tower, through neglect, had all but disappeared. These three towers in that city of towers are the three disciples that our Lord said cannot be my disciples. For the first builder is he who did not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, which is to say that he did not love the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his strength, and with all his mind. See, Luke preserves the idiom the Semitic idiom of hate. But Matthew records, records the words of our Lord in a way that our 21st century ears might understand a little better. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Because this is what our Lord means when he says, hate. He means that you are to love God so much, so strongly, so completely, so absolutely encompassing that by comparison, anything else, anything might seem as nothing. And for this first builder, he was one who had come from a family that was not Christian. His wife and his children were not Christian. His sister, well, she had left religion altogether. But the builder failed to realize who our true family is. True family are your brothers and sisters in Christ. Your true family is found in he who has washed away your sin by his blood. 
Your true family is that which is marked on your forehead and on your heart. It is found in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The second builder is the one who did not bear her cross and come after Christ. For bearing your cross means that you will face temptation, rejection, persecution, and quite possibly death. For when you bear a cross, you bear it in anticipation and expectation that you would suffer the same fate as our Lord. And the third builder is the one who did not renounce all that he has. Now, it's not a call to asceticism, that sort of radical poverty that the monastics uh, employed in the Middle Ages, rejecting any and all physical property. It's rather a call, a call to be ready, ready to give up anything and everything, no matter how precious, no matter how valuable, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of salvation, and for the love of God, for possessions, riches, the pleasures of life are a most dangerous threat to discipleship. As you might recall, when the rich young man asked our Lord what it was that he was to do, and being told that he should sell everything, he went away. For the devil and the angels, his angels, his fallen angels have no scruples. They attack and will continue to attack with every advantage they can find, with every weakness that you might display, be that through family or through friends, through society and culture or government or threats to your lifestyle or your person. Whatever it is that you treasure, that you value, whatever it is that you might hold more dear to yourself than even God, these are the things the devil will attack and he will threaten to take away unless you leave your tower. And that is why the way of discipleship is like a tower, a tower that is a tall, defensible structure, not one like in Babel, the tower built by man to glorify himself, but a tower whose foundation is the sure and certain word of God. That wondrous and firm foundation given to us in the apostles and the prophets. And it's upon this foundation that the Christian lays down stone upon stone, brick upon brick in the way of the sanctified life. For having received the spirit of adoption in the waters of holy baptism, you are equipped for every good work that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may walk in these good works and strengthen in the faithful hearing of God's Word and the reception of the Lord's Supper. Each stone of your tower is laid, held together with the mortar of God's grace. And guided by the Holy Spirit, your hand is held steady by the law. Steady by the law in what we call its third use, the guide the sure and steady standard of a godly walk in life in accordance with the eternal and immutable will of God. And this tower, based in the Word, built and constructed through the Holy Spirit and sanctified living, builds into Christ, who is the cornerstone, or quite literally, as the Greeks would call it, the head of the corner. He is the thing placed upon the top that holds all things together. And even though this discipleship sounds as though it has a heavy cost, the prize is of infinite value. It is life eternal. And brothers and sisters, that prize is already yours. For you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God in the true family. You were built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus being 
the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple of the Lord. And in him you are being built together into a dwelling place for God in the Spirit. And let us rejoice as we receive the word of God and the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to strengthen our hands that we may build we may build a tower that leads into him to defend us from the attacks of Satan and all the fallen angels and that from this tower from this defensible position in God we may say to our family our earthly family and to our neighbors and to all who would hear, come, join us here. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.